Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn about asymptotic notations. What are the asymptotic notations uh, and why it is used? First of all, asymptotic notations are used to rank or compare the order of growth. That is, this is the representation of, of the running time of a, an algorithm. Okay, uh, the notations normally used to represent the running time of an algorithm are O, big O notation, this one, the first one is big O notation, second one big O mega notation, next one is theta notation and little o notation. Let's study these notations in detail. Coming to big O notation, function f of n is equal to big O of g of n. So, normally f of n equal to this portion O of g of n is represented as uh, read as big O of g of n. If and only if there exist positive constants such a c and n naught such that f of n is less than or equal to c into less than or equal to c into g of n for all n greater than equal to for all n greater than equal to n naught. Okay. Now, what are we going to, when a function is given, fun, what is f of n? f of n is running time of your program. For that, you need to, you need to find one upper limit, upper bound function. So, what is that upper bound? Uh, that is the multiple of, uh, that function has to be a multiple of some c, some constant c. So, you have to find a sum function c into g of n. See, you can see here, this is an upper bound, upper bound or upper limit for your function, your function after some point of value, after some point of value, that value is n naught. So, you need to find that n naught. Normally, we consider n naught as greater than or equal to 1. So, the value of g of n is the upper bound value of f of n. So, you need to find upper bound value, upper bound value to find upper bound value, you need to have, uh, you need to know c and or uh, you need to find c and n naught. So, f of n is given, g of n also will be given. Next, let us prove 3n plus 2 belongs to big O of g, big O of n. So, when a problem is given like this, first we need to identify f of n part of it and g of n part of it. f of n is 3n plus 2, g of n is, g of n is n from this portion. This is g of n. Now, what we need to find? We need to find f of n less than or equal to c into g of n for all n greater than or equal to n naught. For all n greater than or equal to n naught. Now, uh, how do we find it? So, let us consider 3n plus 2 which is obviously less than or equal to 3n plus n. Let us take this portion as 10. So, for some value of n greater than or equal to n naught for some value of n naught, n greater than or equal to n naught. So, we do not know what is the, uh, we, uh, we need to find n naught now. So, if 3n plus 2 is less than or equal to 4n, for all n greater than or equal to n naught. So, which value? We got to know c is 4 now. Which value of n naught it is greater? So, that is why, that is why, let us find in a trial and error manner. This is this is n column and this is f of n column and here c into g of n column. Now we know what is c into g of n that is 4n. Uh, 
n suppose n is 1 n is 1 okay n is 1 then f of n is 3 plus 5 3 plus 2 that is 5 4 into n is 4 so you can see here when when n is 1 n is 1 f of n is 2 3 4 uh, that is if it is 4 8 12 16 so n is somewhere here c into g of n is somewhere here whereas f of n is somewhere here because it's bit uh, larger than this value next when n is 2 when n is 2 it is 3 n plus 2 it will be 3 into 2 6 8 so 4 n is 8 it is equal when n is 2 it is both are both are equal okay when n is 3 when n is 3 f of n is 3 3 3 into 3 9 9 plus 2 11 so next 4 n is 4 3 is a 12 next 4 4 3 4 12 12 14 then 4 n 4 n is 4 4 16 so you can see here uh, now when n is 2 it is same when n is 3 when n is 3 uh, it is somewhere 11 f of n is 11 whereas uh, g of n is 12 so initially g of n was like this now it is going like this okay whereas f of n is like this initially it was greater now it is going like this suppose okay so we got the upper bound uh, from n not equal to 2 so c is for for all n greater than equal to 2 so we can say that 3n plus 2 belongs to order of n for all c equal to 4 as where where c equal to 4 and n greater than equal to 2 so this is how we can prove it next we'll see the next notation that is omega notation function f of n equal to omega of g of n if and only if there exists positive constants c and n not such that f of n greater than equal to c into g of n for all n greater than equal to n naught the value of g of n here it is the lower bound value of f of n so earlier we used to find the we used to find the upper bound in case of big omega but in case of uh, sorry in case of big o whereas in case of big omega we are going to find the lower limit so after some point of life it should take a for all uh, that is the remaining values the remaining n values it should take a lower value than the f of n so you should get a lower limit like this now let's see the example so 3n plus 2 equal to omega of n n plus 2 equal to omega of n first of all in this case f of n is 3n plus 2 f of n is 3n plus 2 and g of n is n g of n is n so now 3n plus 2 e obviously greater than equal to 3n for all n greater than equal to n we need to find that n not value we need to find that and okay we can see that 3n plus 2 greater than equal to 3n how if you minus 2 if you minus this by 2 okay what you are going to you are going to get 3n so obviously 3n plus 2 is bigger than the 3n for some value of n not so we need to find that value we need to find that we got c now c is 3 we need to find now n naught so n naught as i told we are going to consider from we are going to consider from 1 
so it is uh, if it is n is 1 3 3 plus 2 5 when n is 2 6 6 when n is 2 uh, this portion becomes 8 so 8 is greater, greater than 6 so obviously from n from 1 that is from n equal to 1 it is showing the low uh, that is c into 3n is having lower uh, that is lower values than 3n plus 2 from n equal to 1. So this is how we need to calculate. Next we will see the nth notation theta notation function f of n equal to theta of n theta of g of n if and only if there exists positive constant c1, c2 and n naught such that c1 into g of n less than or equal to f of n less than or equal to c2 g of n for all n where n greater than equal to n naught where n greater than equal to n naught so n naught also as I told we are going to consider greater than 0 value greater than 0 value so now um, c2 j of n f of n c on f so here for f of n you need to find the upper limit and lower limit so f of n need to be bounded both above and below by some constant multiples of j of n some constant multiples of j of n ok so you need to find the upper bound as well as lower bound now also you need to find some n not value so to find uh, upper bound as well as lower bound you need to find c2 c1 as well as n not let's prove now uh, examples related to theta notation half n into n minus 1 belongs to theta of n square theta of n square so as I told we need to find c of n, c1 of g of n less than or equal to f of n less than or equal to c2 g of n for all for all n greater than or equal to n greater or equal to n naught what is f of n this portion what is g of n this portion so c1 n square less than or equal to half n into n minus 1 less than or equal to c2 c2 we need to find g of n that is n square for all n greater than or equal to n naught now initially i will find the upper limit initially i will find upper limit let's check half n into n minus 1 is nothing but half n square minus half n which is clearly since since this portion is lesser than the half n square because you are subtracting so obviously this portion will be less than half n square so we got our we got our um, upper bound for all n greater than equal to n naught so which value of n naught it is greater from which value of n naught it is greater so what if it is n naught is 1 what if it is n is 1 so n is 1 it is less so it is from n greater than equal to 1 it is for all n greater than equal to 1 it is true Next, we will see the lower bound limit for this f of n. So, c1 n square less than or equal to half n, half n square minus half n. So, now half n square minus half n is greater than or equal to c1 n square. I am just reversing this, but the meaning is same. Okay. For all n greater than equal to n naught. So now this portion is is clearly greater than equal to 1 by 4 n square. 
1 by 4 n square. So, if you try with the trial and, er and error method, here it is greater than greater than n greater than equal to 2. So, this is true for n greater than equal to 2. So, we got our n naught value. But, but, uh, proof is saying what? C1 of g of n less than or equal to f of n less than or equal to g to g for all n greater than or equal to n naught. Both should have a common value. So, upper limit is true for all n greater than or equal to 1. Lower limit is true for n greater than or equal to 2. So, common among these is n greater than or equal to 2. So, we can say that this is half n into n minus 1 is less than or equal to upper limit is half n square for all n greater than or equal to 2 because both satisfies from both the constraints are satisfies satisfies from n greater than or equal to 2. So which is this can be written now as 1 by 4 n square less than or equal to half n into n minus 1. So, 1 by 4 n square. So, this is the value. Next, little o. The function f of n equal to little o of g of n if and only if limit n tends to infinity, limit n tends to infinity f of n divided by g of n equal to 0. Limit n tends to infinity f of n divided by g of n equal to 0. So, little o notation is used to describe an upper bound that cannot be tight. Thus, it is a loose upper bound of f of n. So, if you consider this example, 3n plus 2 belongs to little o of n square. So, you need to find, you have got your f of n that is 3n plus 2, g of n is n square. So, limit n tends to infinity 3n plus 2 divided by n square is nothing but this equal to 